I'm Steven, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Alicia, and I'm a level two chef. I'm Marina Urbina, and I've been a professional chef for 11 years. A good empanada with the right amount of filling, that's gonna be a good snack to get you to the next meal. I like empanadas because they fall into my favorite category of food, which is party food. So my empanadas are inspired in Venezuelan traditional empanadas. They're gonna be fried, super crunchy, and delicious. First, I'm gonna start with the filling, and today, I'm making breakfast empanadas. I'm making a chicken tinga filling, and chicken tinga is basically a smoky tomato-y sauce that the chicken is sort of stewed in. My filling today, it's gonna be a sous vide spicy pork shoulder. The reason why I like plant-based meat is it's been a decade since I had meat, but I sometimes I have that urge to taste meat. This scratches that itch. First, I'm going to crack my eggs, grab a pinch of salt, Add some black pepper, throw them in the pan. I'm gonna cook them low and slow just so they don't overcook. Put these eggs to the side. So I'm gonna get started with my aromatics. I'm just gonna crush my garlic first. Bay leaf just adds a nice sort of savory flavor to the water. I'm gonna add my black peppercorn, and last but certainly not least, the salt. And now I'm gonna throw my chicken in there and let it poach for about 25 minutes. Poaching your meat is totally fine, but I rather use the sous vide technique because you can get way more flavor out of this. The sous vide technique is basically a water bath that maintains the temperature of the water, and that way the meat cooks very evenly. I'm gonna start making the spice rub first. I'm going to use a spice grinder, smoked paprika, dry oregano, peppercorn, chili flakes, garlic powder, salt, brown sugar, and finally, mustard seeds. So I'm gonna grind this, and I want a very fine powder that will evenly cover all my pork. I'm gonna add my onions and garlic, let those cook a little bit, add some of the sausage, then the mushrooms, finally add the spinach. Season it a little bit, make sure it's very flavorful. Add the cayenne, and then I'm gonna add the cheese on top. What I would like to see is the cheese start to melt, intertwine with the vegetables, hold hands, and be like, oh, okay, we're together in this, on this journey of empanadas. So I'm gonna use half of my spice rub to cook the pork in the sous vide, and the other half I'm gonna use it when I cook the pork in the oven. I'm rubbing the pork with my hands because I want to get that rub in the pork. So now that my chicken is fully cooked through, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it from the liquid, set it aside, let it cool, and I'm gonna reserve about a cup of this cooking liquid for my chicken tinga sauce. So now what I'm gonna be doing is to put my pork in the sous vide bag, seal it, and take all the air out to start cooking it in the water. The reason why I'm doing the sous vide is because I want a perfectly cooked pork. I don't have a ton of space in my New York City cabinet, so a sous vide machine just isn't worth the real estate for me. It's gonna be so juicy and tender. I'm going to leave my pork here cooking for 24 hours at 165 degrees. I do not want to cook anything for 24 hours, but I appreciate those who do. Now that my pork has been in the sweet machine for 24 hours, it's perfectly cooked, super juicy. I'm going to take it out of the bag. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the second rub. And I'm going to bake this at 300 for about an hour and a half, just to get a very crispy and golden brown crust. So now that my chicken has cooled down a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and start shredding up the chicken. Wow, gloves, feeling real lunch lady right now. I love to use two forks, just like this. It's faster. So as I'm shredding apart this chicken, it's almost like string cheese. I mean, you can also do it with your hands. So I'm done shredding my chicken, and next I'm gonna work on my tinga sauce. First, I'm gonna combine some cored Roma tomatoes. Then I'm gonna add my oil. I'm gonna drop in my ground cumin, my four garlic cloves. Chipotle peppers in adobo sauce is basically like a smoked jalapeno that's just marinating in this sauce. I'm gonna drop in three or four of these, as well as some of the reserved marinade in this can. Just adding some salt. So now I'm basically just gonna blend all these raw ingredients together and make a nice smooth sauce, and then I'm going to add that to a pan of sauteed onions and just kind of combine all of that together. So I'm gonna let this simmer for about 10 minutes until it really starts to thicken and reduce a bit, and then I'm gonna add my shredded chicken. Now that this is cooked, 
I'm gonna put it in the bowl with my eggs that I set aside. And, and that's, that's my, my filling. filling. I'm using a store-bought empanada dough. I've never made dough from scratch. I don't think I'm at a place in my life where I can make dough properly. I'm gonna be using a puff pastry dough. I did not make this dough from scratch. There's already enough going on with this dish and pre-made dough works just fine. I'm gonna start making the dough and I'm gonna be using hamoni. Hamoni is a dry corn which is white and I'm gonna soak it overnight in water and with a little bit of salt to get it nice and tender. Then I'm gonna boil it to cook it through. The process of preparing my dough is strenuous. Thanks for cooking, good for you. So now that my hominy, it's fully cooked, it's a little bit chewy, it's ready, and I'm gonna mix it with milk, ghee, garlic powder, and a little bit of togarashi, a traditional Japanese spice. It's not the traditional way, but I love to add a little bit of spiciness to the dough and more flavor. Wow, that was easy. Okay, I can tell that my dough is ready because it's not sticking to my hands. Next, I'm gonna put the, all the dough in a bowl and I'm gonna let it sit in the fridge for around 20 minutes so it dries out. I prefer to use puff pastry because I think it's buttery and creates a nice flaky crust. Using puff pastry to make empanadas, it's totally fine, but I prefer to use how many because that's the way we do it in Venezuela. Now that my dough is ready, it's a little bit dry, exactly how I wanted it, I'm gonna start forming the bowls to make the empanadas. I'm gonna roll up my puff pastry because I want it a little bit thinner than the thickness it comes prepackaged. So puff pastry is a laminated dough that's basically dough and butter layered on top of each other, so that way when it bakes, that butter helps the dough separate and create those nice flaky layers in the pastry. I'm gonna cut it in equal pieces. I like to roll them all first, so I'm, I know that they're all the same size and then I'm gonna start pressing them. So I'm not fancy. I am gonna use a bowl to serve as my perimeter for my empanada. I'm gonna use a knife to cut around that. I like to use a tortilla press to form my empanadas because the dough is gonna be super even. The plastic bag is gonna make sure that your dough doesn't stick to the surface of the tortilla press. So this gets a very even empanada dough. And that's my dough. So now I'm gonna start to form the empanadas. Now I'm gonna grab the dough, place it on the plate, grab some filling, place it inside. Make sure I'm getting enough egg. I'm using Monterey Jack cheese because I really like the flavor and how that balances against the smokiness of the tinga sauce. I'm gonna wet the edge of the dough so that the edges stick together and they don't open up. Now I'm going to try to close it, make a pocket. Press on the outsides with the fork. This is so that it sticks together, not for looks. It also looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of pinch and tuck the edges so that way as it's baking, nothing starts to leak out. Sometimes when it heats up, it starts to form bubbles. So I'm gonna poke some holes just to add some ventilation. You could totally use a fork to enclose your empanadas if you're a newbie, but braiding it just looks prettier. And personally, I like doing things by hand. So I'm making an egg wash to brush over my empanada dough so that way when it bakes, we get a nice golden, crusty situation. And now I'm going to cut it. Perfect, open it, make that perfect circle, and that's it. Who wants empanadas? I love making empanadas. Now that the empanadas are ready, let's put them in the air fryer. Before I put these in the air fryer, I'm gonna add a little egg wash, just so it doesn't dry out. You don't wanna add too much of an egg wash because then it just starts cooking the egg and you just have egg forming like moss on the side of a tree. So I'm gonna bake my empanadas at 375 for about 15 minutes, but I'm just looking for them to get nice and golden brown and that's when I know they'll be done. I'm frying my empanadas because it's the tradition in Venezuela to fry them. Who doesn't love anything deep fried? I just think it's a bit intimidating to set up a whole deep fry situation. So I'm frying my empanadas because the texture, it really is totally different if you bake them. With this dough especially, you have to fry them so you get that crispiness that I'm looking for. I'm air frying instead of deep frying because my doctor said so, pretty much. <laughs> so I'm gonna put them in the air fryer. It's a healthy alternative. I've not worked with an air fryer. People seem very excited about them. The air fryer is the way to go. You don't have to work on preheating the oven. We're busy people. We got other things to do besides watch empanadas grow. Now I'm gonna turn the air fryer on, 350, 15 minutes. So I have my oil set up at 350 degrees. 
and I don't wanna overcrowd the pot because that way they're not gonna cook evenly. So I'm scooping a little bit of the oil on the top of the empanadas. So while I'm frying them, the empanadas are floating and there are some parts that are not getting oil. I'm just cooking the dough because the filling is already cooked. So my empanadas have baked for about 15 minutes. They're nice and golden brown and the dough is puffed up. They're nice and golden. They didn't crack because we added the egg wash. So it looks good. Once I see that the empanadas are golden brown and they're fully cooked, they're ready to take them out. So now I'm getting started on the sauce and I'm making guacamole. Guacamole? Always. It's a good pairing. You don't want just empanadas by itself. It needs something and it's always guacamole. So I'm making like a lime herby crema and I think that that herbiness is gonna help balance the smokiness of the chicken tinga. I'm gonna be making a smoky chimichurri. A chimichurri is basically a sauce made with herbs, citrus, and a little bit of spiciness. So first I'm gonna cut open the avocados, mash them up in a bowl, then I'm gonna work on the onions, dice them up, then I'm gonna grab the tomatoes, cut those up. I like my guac spicy. So I'm gonna take the whole jalapeno. I just feel so terrified to cut off my thumb. I need my thumb. Use this lime squeezer. I'm gonna grab some of the cilantro. So now I'm gonna mix it up and then it's gonna be ready. So first I'll start with my sour cream, some mayonnaise, just to kind of help balance some of the tanginess from the sour cream, and my cilantro. And I'm using both the leaves and the stems because why not? So now I'm gonna go ahead and grate my garlic into the food processor. Every time I grate, I am worried that I'm going to grate off my fingertips. I'm gonna zest the lime and I'm gonna juice the lime. The lime zest will add a nice pop of color to the sauce. I'm just gonna sprinkle in some salt to help bring out some of these flavors. I love to use a mortar and pester because it really releases all the flavors of the herbs and the shallots and the garlic. So I'm gonna start smashing this mixture of herbs. I have parsley, shallots, and garlic. I'm gonna add all my spices, the vinegar, and the olive oil. The smoked paprika, chili flakes, dry oregano, virgin olive oil, and red wine vinegar. Uh, so I'm gonna let this sit for 10 minutes so all the ingredients can really combine and boost the flavor. So now I'm gonna blend up all these ingredients until it's a nice, smooth, cohesive sauce. And that's my lime herb crema. All the juices are out, the flavor, it's concentrated and it's delicious. So I'm gonna change it to another bowl. And in this case, for me, it's very important to add different levels of acidity. So I'm gonna finish it with lime and lemon zest and juice. And this is my smoky chimichurri. So now that the empanadas are out of the air fryer, I'm ready to plate. I'm gonna get my empanadas down on the plate and I'm gonna add my sauce. And these are my breakfast empanadas with guacamole. And these are my chicken tinga empanadas with my herby lime crema. And these are my pulled pork empanadas with a smoky chimichurri. I see a crispy outside, so I'm gonna hear as I eat, nailed it. I mean, everything about it says, bite me, eat me. I'm gonna be yummy. And... Oh, oh. Mm. oh my God. Worth the pain. That's some really good guac. Juicy in the inside, crunchy in the outside, and the chimichurri. It's the perfect sauce that balances up all the flavors. The herby creamy sauce really is complementing the smokiness of the chicken tinga, and the sauce really slaps. Empanadas are a Spanish and Latin American treat. Let's see how each of our three chefs made theirs. Steven made a vegetarian filling using Beyond Meat plant-based sausage. It contains a proprietary blend of pea and rice proteins with coconut oil pieces to replicate animal fat. It's a tasty and good approximation of real sausage. Adriana used a sous vide technique. The meat is seasoned and then vacuum sealed in a pouch which is submerged in water held at a constant temperature by an immersion circulator. The idea is that the meat will never exceed the temperature of the water. So it's a slow cooking method, which allows proteins to hydrolyze, fat to melt, and some of the connective tissue to convert to the softer gelatin. 
There are no browning reactions with this method, so she baked it so that the radiant heat of the oven aided in browning the outside of her pork shoulder, also known as a picnic roast, that comes from the shoulder area of the hog above the forelegs. Alicia used prepackaged laminated puff pastry. Laminated doughs are flaky because solid cold fat is covered with flour and rolled to flatten the layers forming sheets of fat and flour. For a traditional puff pastry, butter is used. Butter has enough water in it to form steam when baked in a hot oven, thereby raising the laminated sheets, giving puff pastry its characteristic flakiness. Adriana made a dough from hominy. Hominy is corn with the hulls removed by soaking it in an alkaline solution. It's very high in starch. She soaked it to soften it before cooking it to a paste through the process of gelatinization. Starch molecules start to vibrate when heated. Hydrogen bonds break and allow water to combine with starch fractions, making the mixture swell and thicken. Corn doesn't contain gluten, so the starches are responsible for the cohesive structure of Adriana's empanada dough. There are so many options for dough, filling, cooking, and sauces when it comes to delicious empanadas. Next time you're in the mood to make them, we hope you'll take some of the tips from our three fabulous chefs.